Hello, everyone. How are you? Welcome back to my channel, The Sensei Personalizing Learning. Okay, uh, disebabkan oleh PKP, jadi Sensei bersiaran daripada memang rumah, nothing about the studio and whatnot. Tak adalah studio-studio semua. Uh, jadi memang uh, daripada rumah lah eh. So, maafkan a background di belakang tu. <laughs> Sebab nak buat kat luar dia banyak pula kan. Okay, nah ya. Okay, so but anyway, Alhamdulillah. Hmm. Um, kita bertemu lagi uh, di sisi ataupun di siri yang seterusnya. I lost my count actually ke si video yang keberapa dah. Uh, but the previous videos which is what happens last week. Okay. Uh, I've already discussed about three types of t-test that you can use in your research. Okay. Which is including um, independent t-test independent t-test or pet t-test and also one sample t-test okay so those are the three types that you may use based on your research questions that you develop jadi nak develop the research questions also has been shared okay has been shared uh, across the videos that i shared with you last week okay so hari ni so for today um sensei nak fokus kepada the procedures, okay, the procedures untuk perform independent t-test and the most important parts that I want to share with you today is on how to report the output of the t-test, okay. Sebab ramai yang tahu macam mana nak buat analisis tapi kadang-kadang kita tak tahu macam mana kita nak report uh, the value or the number that we have from the output of t-test daripada SPSS tu tadi kan uh, kita tak tahu nak interpret macam mana and then nak letak nilai apa uh, nilai apa daripada table tu yang kita kena extract and then put in our report okay so today's content will be discussed about those two things okay yang pertama how to perform the analysis itself and then yang kedua the most important part is macam mana kita nak interpret ataupun kita nak bring about and extract okay the data dekat dalam table of output daripada SPSS tu into our writing okay so stay tuned alright so let me share my screen kejap eh um minta maaf lah ya sensei ni bukanlah uh, youtuber yang <laughs> youtuber tak layak pun dipanggil youtuber uh, ah yeah, ya just sharing suka-suka kan jadi jangan terlalu melihat sangatlah the quality of the video lagipun kita memang nak share-share suka-suka insyaAllah okay kejap eh wait a minute uh, I share my screen the whole screen lah kot eh kejap eh okay so let me bring to my slide first I really hope that you can see my slide currently. Alright. Okay, so hari ini fokus kita adalah kepada uh, independent t-test dulu. Okay, so bagaimana kita, uh, bagaimana, it's not bagaimana, bila kita nak pakai independent t-test, this one dah diterangkan di dalam video yang sebelum ini. Okay, so you guys please search for the previous videos uh, which is ada uh, three types of analysis tu. Uh, untuk t-test eh? nanti tengok. Okay so for today I've create um, research questions and also research objective in particularly to perform our analysis for today. Okay so for examples eh? for examples like kita ada this research objective yang kita nak achieve uh, which is to compare the effectiveness of module to non-module groups with regards to thinking skills ability in learning biology. So maksudnya kita nak compare antara dua group. Okay, a uh, group yang sensei namakan kat sini ini main-main je suka-suka so that you can uh, have the idea macam mana nak buat independent t-test ni. So kita ada dua group which is module and non-module. Jadi kita nak compare dua group ini dengan menggunakan uh, score yang sama. Alright. So let's say kita ada beberapa RQ tapi kita nak pergi kepada RQ yang pertama dulu iaitu is there any significant difference between the mean score 
of the pretest between module and non-module group with regards to thinking skills ability in learning biology. Okay, kalau perasan nampak eh, ayat dekat atas dengan ayat dekat bawah dia mestilah approximately the same. Okay, dia punya perspektif, dia punya structure kena lebih kurang sama. Jangan tukar-tukar ayat tu antara RO and RQ. Okay, to avoid confusion lah. Okay, jadi kat sini nampak dengan jelas research question kita yang pertama adalah nak melihat sama ada ada keperbezaan yang signifikan antara uh, no, no. adakah ada perbezaan signifikan dalam mean score of pretest okey tengok eh kita nak bandingkan pretest score sekarang between two group which is module and non module and then kita nak bandingkan dia punya pretest score clear eh alright now let's move on So seems approximately kita punya hypothesis will be like this. Okay, if you're using a null hypothesis, then your null hypothesis will sound like there is no significant difference between the module, eh, sorry, between the mean score of the pretest. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My sentences ni kelang kabut pula kan. There is no significant difference in the mean score of the pretest between module and non-module group with regards to thinking skills ability in learning biology. Okay, let me change it immediately here. Okay, sorry. Sini pun sama lah eh. Okay, so automatically alternative hypothesis will be there is no significant difference with the same structure of the sentences from the null hypothesis that we have created. Uh, jangan guna ayat yang berbeza-beza. Uh, sebab nanti kita sendiri baca pun confused. Uh, betul ke apa yang kita nak bandingkan ni? Uh, reader baca lagi confused. Examiner baca lagi confused. Okay, so please make sure that our sentences is in, in the same perspectives and also the structure to is arranged accordingly approximately the same with RO, RQ and also null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Jangan menggunakan ayat yang berbeza-beza sebab kita nakkan dia tu nampak macam sama je semua macam gitu. Alright. Okay so now kita dah clear dah about RO kita, RQ kita and null hypothesis or alternative hypothesis. So The big questions now is how to perform the analysis and how to report the output from the SPSS tu tadi. Inilah yang selalunya critical pun kan. Rasanya how to perform tu rasanya tak ada masalah sangat. Cuma bila bila come to what value that we need to extract from the table, ah itu yang pening kepala sikit. Okay, so let's go. Let's dig dive into the analysis and also the reporting style of independent t-test. Okay, jump in. Okay, now let us jump to SPSS. Okay, so SPSS ni yang saya saya guna adalah version twenty two, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so perhaps version lain pun dia lebih kurang sama je interface dia. Okay, cuma mungkin apabila version yang berbeza di upgrade here and there sikit lah kan. Tapi interface and button tu rasanya tak ada perbezaan yang ketara lah antara version-version yang berbeza. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Siapa menyebut ni? Tak sedap. Okay now, sorry, I'm sorry guys. Okay, so now uh, let us jump into the analyzing uh, of this particular score. Okay, so tadi kalau kita tengok kepada uh, kita punya research question. Okay, kita nak tengok uh, is there any significant difference between the mean score of the pretest between the module and non-module group. Okay, jadi kita nak tengok module and non-module and then the score yang kita nak analyze will be the pretest. Okay, so kita pergi balik kepada SPSS. Okay, kalau tengok kat sini kita ada score pretest, post test, retention test, we have a kumpulan here, okay, which is kita dah define lah, saya dah define siap-siap. Ini sebenarnya data yang dah memang sedia ada dekat dalam saya punya laptop, so I just grab it lah kan, uh, so that I can perform this analysis for your understanding. Jadi kalau as you can see here, kita ada kumpulan, saya dah label siap-siap 1 and 2. Okay, so let us assume that 1 is the module. Sebab kat sini kumpulan ni saya dah uh, labelkan dia sebagai satu adalah PPMM. Tak apa, it's okay, I change it. 
supaya tak confuse eh. Okay, so katalah first one is the group with module and then the second one is non module. Ah uh, macam itulah eh. Okey kat sini pun kita change tak ada masalah, tak ada masalah. No problem. Okey so the value is 1. So label dia kita letak module and then kita add eh. Existing replace label 2 kita letak non module. Okey so kita add. Replace yes. Okay, so that kita tak ada. Eh, kejap. Saya tekan apa? Ah, betul lah. Okay, so now tak confuse lah. Eh? Sebab research question tadi saya buat module and non-module. Okay, so now kita dah ada satu non-module. Eh, so satu module. And then uh, dua adalah label untuk non-module punya group. Okay, so the score that we want to analyze is the pre-test score. And then kita nak compare between the first one, the first group which is module group and also the second group which is non-module group. Okay, now. Let us perform independently test. Okay, kenapa independent? Sebab kita ada dua kumpulan yang berbeza untuk dibandingkan. Okay. Now, first of all, go to analyze. Okay, and then choose compare means. Right, since it involve two different groups, so kita kena pilih independent sample t-test. Okay, kita klik. Tak. Okay, so this dialog box akan appear. Now, saya cancel balik lah, eh. reset balik. Supaya tak confuse. Okay, so test variables, ini adalah skor yang kita nak analyze. Okay, so since kita punya research question, just want to take a look about the pre-test skor. Jadi, kita masukkan pre-test skor ke dalam box test variable. Okay, so let us click the pre-test here. Okay, on the left side of the box. And then, kita add. Insert masuk ke dalam box of test variable. Okay, so since kita nak compare between two group, which is group module and non-module. Okay, so kita pilih the group yang kita label tadi, which is module and non-module tu tadi kan, kumpulan tadi. Okay, so click this particular variables. But this time, kita insertkan dalam grouping variable. Pak. Okay, nanti dia akan tanya kumpulan. Tak, tak. Macam tu lah. <laughs> Lebih kurang kan ada punya question tu. So, kita need to define the groups first. Right. So, click button define groups. Okay. So, group 1, letaklah label. Group 1 is for 1. Uh, which is yang kita label 1 tadi. Uh, in this case, particularly module punya group lah. Group 2 adalah group yang kedua dalam label kita. Okay. Which is non-module group in this case. So, continue. So kat sini dekat options ni, every time kita buat analisis, kita boleh pilih lah the confidence interval percentage uh, yang kita intend to kan. Kalau kata rasa nak 95%, 95 lah. Kalau nak 99, 99 lah. But usually kita using uh, 95% of confidence interval. Right? So continue. Okay, then pop, click OK. Okay, so we have the output in the output interface currently. Okay, kalau katalah output tu... Uh, tak keluar macam ni, uh, kita just click je kat bawah tu dia akan ada two versions of interface. Jadi kalau katalah lepas analisis pun dia keluar this particular same interface, kita boleh ambil dekat statistik bawah ni kan. Uh, then kita klik dekat output punya interface. No worries, dia tak akan hilang lah kat situ. Okay, jadi kita ada table. Uh, so, selalunya bila sensei buat coaching untuk postgraduate kan, dekat sini dia bermasalah. Saya tahu nak buat analisis macam mana sensei, tapi nak Dah lepas dapat output tu nak buat apa? <laughs> Itu adalah selalunya soalan yang paling kerap lah yang saya terima dekat dalam WhatsApp dan sebagainya kan. Okay so bila kita dapat output ni apa yang kita perlu buat? Kita kena report lah kan. Alright jadi kita nak tengok hari ni macam mana kita nak extract. What is the value that is actually we need to extract in our report? Okay jap. Saya so, ambil snipping tool so that I can snip this box. Okay, I snip this one. Eh? Okay, and then copy. Kita pergi kepada word pula kali ni. Pak, kita paste. Okay, let me zoom it first. Oh, termasuk pula nama saya kat sini. Okay, ini. Okay, jadi ini yang kita dapat daripada SPSS. 
uh, kat mana kita nak ambil the value bila kita nak report. Okay. Boleh eh? Are you ready? Okay. Macam ada orang jawab je. Are you ready? Okay. Syok sendiri juga kadang-kadang bila bercakap seorang-seorang ni. Okay, so first of all yang kita kena tengok since they involve two different groups, okay, kita kena tengok the Levin test dulu. Ha, Levin test uh, punya results. Okay, Levin test duduk kat sini. Sekejap ni saya nak highlight. Okay, Levin test punya results dia ada di sini. Dia tak boleh. Eh, kejap, kejap, kejap. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, dia tiba-tiba tak boleh nak highlighted pula. Ay. Okay, kat sini eh. Ha, macam tu. Okay, kat mana kita nak tengok value of living test? Ni, dekat significant punya value ni. Dekat box dia ni kan. Okay, and then as you can see, kita ada value of significant for living test. Okay, first of all, it is very important for us to take a look this value dulu. Okay, sebab kenapa dia ada dua kemungkinan. Okay, sekiranya living test kita ni, living ke living test. Okay, living test kita ni, the nilai, the nilai, wah. <laughs> nilai dia adalah larger than 0.05. Okay, dengan betul-betul eh. Kalau significant value in level test punya box ni is larger than 0.05, kita kena ambil t-test punya significant value daripada equal variance assume. Ha, maksudnya the first line. Jadi means kita kena ambil this value. Ha, kat sini. Okay, ingat eh, kita kena ambil equal variance assume. Sekiranya P, significant value dekat Leben test is larger than 0.05. So, kita ambil significant T test daripada first row, equal variance assume. Which is, in this case, dia akan jadi this nilai. 0.211. Sebab apa? Sebab ini adalah T test lah. Ini adalah analisis result T test kita. Okay, so first of all, kena chart living test dulu. If significant value of living test is larger than 0.05, then kita kena ambil significant value daripada t-test punya results daripada the first row. Iaitu equal variance assume. Dapat eh? Takut confused, takut tak faham. Takut ada barrier in terms of the language tu tadi. Okay, but, but, if, if, if significant value of Libin test ni is smaller, smaller than 0.05, okay, smaller eh. So, kita kena ambil nilai t-test daripada equal variance not assume, which is in this case adalah the second row of the significant value in t-test box. Boleh eh, dapat eh. Okay, so maksudnya the first row of significant value from the t-test Okay. The first row ni kita ambil sekiranya Libin test kita adalah larger than 0.05. Okay. Sekiranya Libin test kita punya nilai of significant ni is smaller than 0.05, kita kena ambil daripada nilai di barisan yang kedua iaitu daripada equal variance not assumed. Ha, kat sini yang confuse lah. Selalunya yang berlaku macam ni lah. Ha, sebab tu dia ada dia ada fungsi tu sebenarnya. Equal variance assume, equal variance is not assume tu. Apa sebenarnya equal variance assume and not assume? Okay, sebenarnya living test ni dia adalah nak tengok homogeneity of the uh, variance tu tadi. Uh, between two score ataupun between two group tu tadi. Uh, maksudnya kita nak tengok sama ada kumpulan kita ni mempunyai variance yang sama tak di permulaan uh, experimental tu tadi ataupun ya yeah, experimental lah kan more or less. Jadi adakah dia mempunyai homogeneity of variance? Sekiranya nilai tu jatuh pada yang kedua maksudnya dia tidak mempunyai variance yang sama. Kalau kata significant value ni is smaller kalau kata dia smaller than 0.05 eh sorry dia ya betul 
sign pun complete. Kalau kata significant value ni is smaller than 0.05, okay, maksudnya kita kena ambil daripada not assume. Jadi maksudnya kedua-dua kumpulan tidak mempunyai variance yang sama. Ha, itu maksud dia. Okay, so dalam kes kita ni, as you can see, the significant value of living test adalah larger than 0.05. Kenapa 0.05? Sebab kita ambil confidence interval 95% tadi. So alpha value kita adalah 0.05. Okay. Jadi now, bila significant value of living test ni menunjukkan dia adalah larger than 0.05, jadi kita kena ambil nilai daripada row mana? Row pertama ke row kedua? Kalau dia larger than 0.05, Betul. <laughs> Walaupun tak ada siapa jawab, saya betul betulkan je lah. Eh. Kita syok-syok sendirilah. Sebab cakap seorang-seorang kan. So kita kena ambil t-test punya significant value daripada the first row. Uh, which is daripada equal variance assumed. Uh, macam tu. Kenapa? Again, eh, sebab significant value living test kita is larger than 0.05. Okay, harap clear benda tu dulu. Okay, jadi sekarang ni kita nak tulis macam mana dulu. Uh, kalau boleh tulis lah dulu the significant value of living test tu dulu tadi. Okay, katalah eh, saya buat ayat ni. So nanti you all boleh tengok lah the template tu and then boleh modify accordingly lah later on kan. Okay, so kita report the living test dulu. Okay, the living test, oh sorry, uh, capital letter eh. <coughs> Minta maaf lah, ini cara-cara sensei share kepada yang newbie lah yang baru-baru kan. Uh, kalau kata uh, ada orang statistician yang lagi hebat tu mungkin cara dia berbeza lah. Uh, ini adalah cara sensei untuk share kepada yang baru-baru berkenalan uh, dengan analisis-analisis ini. So just respect lah the way it is. Kalau rasa macam tak kena dengan selera, you may leave je. <laughs> tak ada masalah. Okay, so the living test for homogeneity of variance. Ini cara kita report lah eh. Should, should, okay lah tu. I minta maaf for my grammar and tenses because this one is spontaneous punya uh, sentences. P is larger eh larger than 0.05 boleh eh? thus both group have uh, uh, the same value of variance ah macam itulah kurang ya eh? okey so the results of t-test analysis was taken from um, equal variance assume. Ah, macam tu. Kita just nak declare yang our living test shows that P is larger than 0.05 which is our P sekarang adalah 0.125. Okay, so obviously dia adalah larger than 0.05. Jadi kita punya results of t-test will be taken from equal variance assumed which is the first row. Uh, the first row punya value, not the second row punya value. Uh, dapat eh the meaning? Okay, cool. Now, let's move on to uh, report our t-test results pula. Okay. Okay, macam mana kita nak report our t-test result? Mula, nanti uh, modify lah accordingly biar cik cantik sikit ayat tu kan. But in anyhow, the standard yang kita kena ada kat sini adalah ini. Ha, itu je nak cakapnya. Okay, jadi kita pergi pada t-test. T-test analysis. Hmm. Eh, jari dah jadi makin gemuk agaknya. Nak menaik, asyik tekan huruf lain, pergi huruf lain, tekan huruf lain. <laughs> Aduh, hai. Kan, dulu lockdown yang pertama, um, ya, yeah, gain weight. Tapi lockdown sekarang, uh, dah apa tu, dah reduce weight. Tak tahulah kalau yang ketiga ni, menaik balik. Eh. Ini makin gemuk pula jari. <laughs> okay, so t-test analysis for pre-test. Show that 
Okay, sekarang kita nak report t-test kita pula eh. Okay, kalau kita tengok tadi t-test kita since kita kena ambil from the first box ataupun the first line, okay. Jadi as you can see, our P is larger. Nampak eh? Kita punya significant value adalah 0.211. Maksudnya dia adalah larger than 0.05. Okay, so kalau kita tengok balik dia punya... Um, apa tu dia punya syarat untuk menerima ataupun reject hipotesis null adalah ha, ni syarat dia eh. Okey kena ingat betul-betul ni eh. Ini untuk newbie lah kan. Ini untuk expert expert I don't think that they have any problems with this particular uh, principles. Okey so how to accept or reject our null hypothesis. Ha, ingat betul-betul bila kita ceritakan pasal null hypothesis sama ada kita fail to reject which is accept our null hypothesis or kita reject the null hypothesis. Okey itu cara kita nak tulis dekat dalam writing. Okey so macam mana kita nak cakap yang kita ni nak accept or kita nak reject the null hypothesis. First of all of course kita kena tengok our confidence interval tadi kita dah uh, determine at 95%. So means our alpha value is 0.05. Okey jadi macam mana kita nak tahu yang kita nak accept or reject? Kita kena tengok nilai P. Nilai P here is actually the significant value tadi lah dekat dalam box tu kan. Okay, so if our significant value or alpha value or P value ni is larger than 0.05, maksudnya kita fail to reject null hypothesis. In other words, kalau dah fail to reject, maksudnya kita kena accept lah the null hypothesis tu. Okay, but On the other hand, if our alpha value or P is smaller than 0.05, so kita kena reject our null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis. Gitu. Ha, itu maksud dia. Jadi sekarang it is very important for us untuk tengok sama ada our significant value dekat dalam t-test tu tadi dia larger than 0.05 or dia smaller than 0.05. Okay, let's go back to our slide. Okay, so tengok eh. Ini significant value kita untuk t-test. Okay, jadi nilai dia adalah 0.211. So obviously dia adalah larger than 0.05. So kalau larger than 0.05, apa kita kena buat? Tengok lagi sekali. Kan? Ini kan? Ha, sini kan? Larger kan? Ha, jadi bila larger than 0.05, maksudnya kita fail to reject null hypothesis. In other words, kita kena accept null hypothesis. Apa null hypothesis kita yang kita dah predetermine? Ha, ni null hypothesis kita. Ha, ni null hypothesis kita. Eh? This one is null hypothesis. There is no significant difference in the mean scope. Ha, so kita kena accept the null hypothesis sebab kita dah fail to reject. Kenapa kita fail to reject? Kenapa kita kena accept null hypothesis? Sebab kita punya p value ataupun significant value for pretest uh, for t test is larger than 0.05. Ah ini sense ulang dan ulang supaya faham konsep tu. Kenapa kita nak kena tengok p ataupun alpha value ni dulu? Okey, makanya apa yang kita kena tulis kat dalam report kita? T-test analysis for pre-test score I'll Tambah sikit lah eh Pre-test score um, Show that there is no significant difference Sebab kita dah kena accept null hypothesis kita kan Jadi null hypothesis kita no significant difference There is no significant difference Yeah. Between in the mean score between ah kat sini between two group tadi kan between module tu tak module and non module kan jadi di, bila kita sebut je group kita tu adalah module group kita kena letak in bracket Okay, dalam bracket ni kita kena ambil dua nilai daripada t test tadi satunya nilai min 
Okay. Satu lagi kita kena ambil nilai standard deviation. Kena letak dalam bracket ni. Ah, macam tu. So kat mana nak dapat nilai mean dan juga nilai standard deviation ni? Ah, let's go back to the table of group statistic. Okay so for module punya. Okay tengok eh. So for module punya. Module punya mean. Dekat sini eh. Ha, ini modul punya mean. Uh, thickness ni saya kecilkan sikit supaya tak adalah besar dabak sangat. Okay, so ini modul. Kita nak mention modul punya group dulu kan? Okay, so ini adalah modul group. Jadi mean dia adalah 37.12960. Whereas the standard deviation is 11.78061. Uh, so dua nilai ini perlu dimasukkan ke dalam bracket. Sebab kita mention modul group dulu. Okay, so tengok eh, kita masukkan kat dalam. So decimal point tu it ups to you lah. Usually kita ambil two decimal point ataupun kadang-kadang ada yang tak nak ambil decimal point pun. So round off terus lah kalau tak nak ambil decimal point kan. Let's say saya ambil dua decimal point lah in this case. Jadi nilai min kita untuk modul adalah 37.13. Katalah kita ambil two decimal point eh. And then our standard deviation based on the table adalah 11.13. 78. Ah dapatlah kita punya in bracket. Oh sorry. Boleh. Setakat tu okey. Okay, so there is no significant difference in the mean score between module group and non module group. Okay, so this time kena mention the mean value and also standard deviation. Uh, for non-module pula. Kat mana nak dapat? In the same table. Okay. So in the same table yang atas tu tadi. This time kita tengok non-module punya line. So for non-module the mean is 41.60. Whereas for standard deviation is 15.62844. Uh, so ambil lah nilai itu. Masukkan ke dalam bracket tu tadi. Okay, let's do this. So the mean value will be 41.60. And please make sure kalau kata kita guna decimal point tu dua decimal point. So all the numbers dekat dalam report tu kena ada the same uh, decimal point. Uh, jangan tiba-tiba yang ni dua decimal point, yang ni tak ada decimal point. The last, the third one pula ada tiga decimal point. Uh, so please make sure they uniformly use lah. Okay, whereas the standard deviation for non-module will be 15.63. Kita round off eh. So, itu nilai yang kena masukkan dalam report kita. With, okay, sekarang ni kita kena ambil nilai T pula. Nilai T pula eh. T, okay, nilai T kat mana kalau dalam table kita ni? Ni kat sini nilai T. Ni eh. Nampak tak? Ha, kita ada box T ni. Yang saya highlight ni. Saya guna pen lah pula. Okay, ini adalah nilai T. Ha, cuma bila kita sebut T dekat bawah ni, dekat kita punya report ni, okay, kita kena letak dalam bracket dan ambil nilai DF dekat sebelah. Letak dalam bracket. Okay, let's do this. So that you can see how we want to do that. Okay, so T dalam bracket, dalam bracket eh, kena ambil nilai DF, 59, masukkan dalam bracket, equal to, ambil nilai T yang kat bawah ni, kat sini eh, sini. Tadi dalam bracket kita letak nilai DF kan, so dekat equal to tu kena ambil nilai T kat sini. Alright, so masukkan equal to negative 1.264, comma, T, lebih besar tadi kan, larger than 0.05. Pak, habis. Okay, so ini more or less adalah template that you can use to report the output of your t-test. Jadi kat sini kita nak extract the value tu yang penting. 
Yang lain-lain tu tak payah tengok pun tak apa dah Sebab itu yang kita paling penting untuk kita report lah Dekat dalam kita punya uh, writing Selepas kita dah dapat output Okay Alright and then furthermore Tambah sikit the reasoning Dah lepas kita report the value The mean standard for both group and what not Kita bagilah reason sikit Kenapa kita dapat this kind of Uh, it's not reason, kita bagi explanation okay? Briefly elaborate okay? The findings tu tadi okay, So for example, katalah sensei nak elaborate sikit Daripada finding ni uh, Mungkin I can say that um, The result reveals That both groups Have Nak cakap apa eh Have uh, equal performance ha, Boleh lah eh, have Equal performance uh, Equal performance Apa tadi kita cakap pasal thinking uh, ability kan Thinking ability <laughs> Equal performance at the beginning Of the experiment uh, With regards To the oh, To the Ability of thinking skills to the with regards to the thinking skills ability. Okay, maafkanlah kalau ada typo tu. Masalah. Okay. Ha, boleh. Jadi maksudnya jangan berhenti setakat uh, the report from the table sahaja. Elaborate sikit lah dalam one or two sentences. Uh, one sentences pun it should be enough. Okay. Uh, kenapa uh, result tu jadi macam tu? Kenapa kita tak ada significant value? Uh, kenapa kita fail to reject our null hypothesis? Okay. So more or less elaborate sikit. Give the reason why. Okay. Give the reason why. Okay, kemudian last kali sebelum kita tutup perenggan untuk report tu tadi, kita cakaplah atas null hypothesis is fail to be rejected. Ah, macam tu. Fail to be rejected pun boleh ataupun nak tulis does null hypothesis is accepted. Pun boleh, mana-manalah kesukaan anda Tak kisahlah, boleh je nak guna yang mana-mana Okay, alright So ini adalah template yang you all boleh guna Untuk melulis report So lepas-lepas ni kalau kata dah expert uh, Bolehlah tukar-tukar uh, sikit ayat tu Tapi kok kok mana pun biasanya standard ayat dia Memang macam ni lah untuk report uh, bagi t-test Okay, harap dapat membantu lah eh uh, Bagi yang tengah buat apa Tengah buat analisis and then mungkin baru-baru untuk menceburkan diri dalam quantitative and then uh, tak tahu masih keriru lagi yang mana satu nak extract the value from the table of output kan. Uh, jadi harap-harap video ini dapat membantulah serba sedikit uh, ya yeah, study sahabat-sahabat sekalian. Okay, jadi bolehlah ambil ayat ini sebagai template insyaAllah. Alright, so rasanya... Um, Settle untuk independent t-test okay. uh, So perhaps on the next video uh, Sensei akan kupas bagaimana Untuk buat uh, Untuk the next analysis lah InsyaAllah tak janji tak janji. <laughs> sekiranya ada masa InsyaAllah Sensei akan cover untuk next next analysis juga uh, So sekiranya anda memerlukan Uh, untuk cara bagaimana nak menulis report uh, untuk sesetengah analisis uh, Bolehlah komen di bawah supaya nanti kalau sensei ada kesempatan Untuk membaca komen anda, sensei akan ya yeah, share with all of you InsyaAllah, alright Okay, so please stay safe and stay vigilant Okay, uh, kita belum masih belum menang okay, Jadi insyaAllah dengan adanya inisiatif uh, pihak kerajaan untuk melaksanakan lockdown ni uh, diharapkan ia dapat memutuskan rantaian COVID-19. Alright, please stay safe. Assalamualaikum. Jumpa lagi.